Okay, welcome to the arbitrary Lagrangian Eulerian method part. People just call it ALE. And the first thing is the most important. People think it's remeshing. Remeshing sounds awesome. Remeshing is a technique that will delete your mesh, keep your geometrical boundaries and do an online remeshing while the simulation is running. So if you encounter severely high mesh distortion, the simulation will stop, create a new mesh inside the body and then keep on going with the simulation. This is what ALE is not doing. And it's interesting to point out, Abacus has no such option as remeshing. People constantly ask me, why does Abacus doesn't have the option? And as far as I know, it's because you encounter a lot of problems and your results are almost 100% of the time you increase the error in, the, in your simulation results if you apply remeshing. So since Abacus is a general purpose application, they said no, we don't de do this because then we cannot guarantee, so to say, for the correctness of the results. And it's interesting, after using many of different uh, meshing tools in and outside FEM softwares, my opinion is that actually Abacus has the best built-in mesher, so if you mesh your object, I would always choose Abacus to do it because it's really powerful and really fast. So it's kind of interesting that Abacus doesn't have a remeshing option even though they seem to have the best built-in mesher. So maybe in the, sometimes in the future we, actually, we will actually see a true remesher built-in into Abacus. <clears throat> Until then, using, if we use Abacus explicit, then we can also activate ALE. And ALE is a rezoning. Some people refer it to as a remeshing, but that's not technically it. So to me, this is wrong. It's an adaptive rezoning method technique in Abacus explicit. What does it do? It's depicted on the right. So it will try, if it detects some sort of element distortion, it will try to move the existing nodes. It, won't, it will not uh, delete the mesh, keep the boundaries and put in new nodes, but rather it will move the nodes inside the given geometrical boundaries. So this is the Eulerian aspect to it. So the Lagrangian aspect is that you still have your, you have the same mesh, the same body throughout your analysis, but the nodes are not spatially fixed. They can be slightly altered between two increments. So what it will try to do is to improve the element aspect ratio. So for example here, in, the, uh, in this element, uh, you can now think about that this point is moving further to the bottom left, then this ratio to this ratio will, will be not as good because in the best case it's quadratic. So the coolest thing you can have is quad only quadratic elements and these two angle will become definitely a problem um, in your analysis. I know you don't have convergence problems, but still this, this can have an effect on your stress distribution. So it will keep the number of elements, nodes, and also the connectivity will stay the same. So this is the Lagrangian aspect, the, the Eulerian aspect is that these nodes can move within the fixed geometrical boundaries of the body. This, as opposed to a true remesher, this is insanely cost effective. So this is done, for example, after every three, five or ten increments in your explicit analysis. So we are talking about milliseconds between two ALE steps. So it will do a couple of um, explicit increments, then stop, will apply this technique, run for another ten increments, stop for a while, 
and um, uh, then continue. It only works with first order reduced integration element, which is, as you, I hope you remember, kind of like the default in Abacus by now. And um, yeah, as I said, use for, uh, first order reduced integration elements. And um, there are different smoothing methods so that basically tell you how this point is moved, for example, back to the best possible way over time. Some fancy math goes into it. Usually you don't have to deal with this kind of options, just stick to the default. Um, and you will later see that the way ALE alters the mesh will eventually yield that your element edges will either be parallel or orthogonal to contact surfaces. And this is pretty cool because this makes it easier for the contact algorithm um, to, to find a new contact which is actually not so much necessary because in explicit dynamic analysis, the contract is handled very computationally efficient. However, this is, this is kind of a win-win situation. And in some case, I hope you remember that this shouldn't be the case that your slave has a coarser mesh than the master. Usually it should be the other way around, but it could be sometimes the case that for whatever reason you have to the larger, um, stiffer, uh, coarser mesh is your slave, all things that actually shouldn't be the case. Um, ALE can help you still maintain a good contact. Uh, and here, explicit dynam dynamic and ALE, um, they go hand in hand, both making sure that you have good contact. The interesting aspect of ALE is that it could or can actually speed up your simulation. So if you think about a simulation that takes a certain amount of time to, to run, let's say one day without ALE, could actually be the case that when you activate ALE that you are done within half of like half a day. How can this be? I mean ALE is not for free, so it costs you a lot of time. Not, I wouldn't say <clears throat> it's cost effective, so it's not a lot of time that you invest, but let's say 20%. Why, does it, why can it still be faster? And the reason um, can be given by, let me go back to it, yeah, here it is. The reason is, whoops, I cannot delete it. Okay, is the AL, uh, LE. ALE can actually maintain or improve your LE compared to your original non-ALE simulation. So, for example, in our case, down on the bottom right, your LE will be something like, I think it's, it will be something, it's, I think, orthogonal to this one. So it will be something like this length. Um, or even shorter. And the nice thing about ALE is, if it achieves to put this dot back to its original position here, your LE this one here is actually larger. So ALE uh, with ALE is larger. Come on, it's larger than your LE with none ALE. So you invest one, you get two in return. That's, so your total commutation is actually more intensive, but you need fewer increments to get to your total time. Because of your increased or improved LE, your delta T can be bigger, can be larger. So you're done in half of the total increments. So especially in simulations when you have severe mass deformation, 
and especially if you have a com like if you see at some port, uh, point that in certain areas or so the elements are compacting in one dimension so for example they are getting very flat so if you go from such elements to such kind of elements you see that your le has significantly reduced and this would vastly or you can say this has linearly increased your computational time because your delta t is linearly increased so you reduce the height by 2 then you then you cut your delta t by 2 and that would yield like double the time to run the simulation and I, I think this is quite easy to understand why ALE can actually uh, speed up your simulation time but there's one thing you should always look at stresses I didn't go into all of the details but there is something called um, advection I think it's called is it called advection hmm I should look that up I thought it was called advection but it doesn't sound right too many me however it's a um, it's a nice fancy term for basically data mapping so because if in such a Eulerian step the nodes are moved Abacus has to similar to what they have to do in the remeshing step which they said they don't like but in ALDO they technically have to set, do the same they have to map the stresses and strains to the artificially moved nodes and also artificially moved integration points so this mapping causes some can ca can cause some error and the problem for some some reason <clears throat> is more apparent in the stresses than in the strains so if you compare non ale to ale you might see some differences in the stresses but not so much in the strains so stresses is always something that you should compare with non ale as maybe a reference to ale however if in your reference non ale simulation you encounter severe mass distortion then this could by itself lead to erroneous results in your stresses and not so much in the strains because the explicit dynamic analysis algorithm will just continue to move your nodes and so on so that the strains can be fine but some stress concentrations due to some sharp angles for example uh, can lead to um, a false stress distribution so it's difficult to to name a true reference but over time you get a feeling for what's right and what's not Okay.